this is Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes. We got through about the first quarter of the uh, big jewelry jar. And so I'm going to pull a few things out of the top and uh, see how far we can get. It empties a little quicker. These things seem to be uh, a bit bigger. So uh, let's get started. I hope you're having a great day. This is something I saw in the jewelry jar that I had some hope for, but it's just uh, lightweight, um, what would I call it? Let's see if we can focus better. Feels like w painted wood, which is not, not, that's not bad. They're nicely painted wood. It's broken. That's a uh, cloth wrapped ring. Let's see another cloth wrapped ring. So what have we got? We at the back here we have lobster claw clasp. It's got a nice heavy chain. Looks like it's just come become disconnected here. So that's an easy repair. Um, let's move the camera over so we can see if I can lay this out a little bit. There's so much big stuff that came out. So When you're trying to re look look through the camera and move stuff at the same time, it looks a little um, disconnected a, a bit. So there's uh, it's a good length of a necklace. Um, I think it would be very wearable. I don't know. I I'd have to see if these are grimy at all. It doesn't look dirty, um, and there's some nice colors. Also, these things would be really be purposeable. Um, Maybe it's just the season. This seems to me to be very Christmassy. It would be nice um, if you were decorating a miniature Christmas tree. Well, not too miniature, just not too small of a, a miniature Christmas tree, but uh, like, you know, a three foot tree. This would be, make a nice little garland on it. Um, so there's that has to go into the repair pile. And talking about Christmas. Oh, funny. This says Auntie Jenny, and my daughter's name is Jenny. Don't think this was ever hers. I also have a, a sister-in-law named Jenny. So let's see what what's in the Auntie Jenny. Aww, in the Auntie Jenny bag. Look at this. This is sweet. It's like a, a purse charm, a purse decoration. Does it work? Yep. And it's a heart with a heart-shaped uh, plastic stone in it. And then, oh, you put a phone number on the back. Is that like a call me thing? Oh, that's kind of cute. And that's a nice, uh, so that's a nice little uh, giftable piece. Ah, I won't try to put it all back together on camera. So, you never know. I've never seen, you never know what you're going to find in a jewelry jar. I don't, I, I, you never know if I'm going to finish my sentences. So I apologize. I get, uh, I get too excited. But that's, that's sweet. All the rhinestones are there. Um, I also saw this bracelet in the jewelry jar. And I thought the orange color was gorgeous. You don't often see um, orange jewelry. It's sort of... Uh, peach and then more of a salmon or coral color green and beige I'm turning it inside out to see if I can see any names or anything because sometimes these are marked and I don't see anything the stretch is there it's a little loose on me I'd like it to be but that's just the size of the bracelet like you couldn't really put them any closer um, so that's very nice, very wearable piece. Great. So far so good. Now this is another piece that I had high hopes for. Seeing it from the outside of the jar. It looked to me like um, Impression Jasper. It's uh, a bit tangled with other things. So let me get it out. Okay, so... Impression Jasper is they take uh, 
jasper and they reconstitute and dye it. But this isn't cold at all. I don't think so. Well, it is a little bit. Certainly, let me see what M Marcia from our vintage store. She's able to tell by putting it on her wrist. The more I hold it, the the colder it's feeling. So maybe this is stone. There's some really nice stone pieces here. We've got four strands. The black leading up to there's a little bit of chain missing something. Oh, it's missing whatever ring. It's just got a hook. So it, it's missing its connector. But this would, you could twist this and wear it twisted like this. It would look quite nice. See how the, or you could uh, leave the strands open and wear them smooth. So I'm going to let that sit and it, it, it's, it is a little cool and it more like it's not heating up as I handle it which um, glass would do. So I, maybe it is the Jasper that I was hoping it would be. And it's not a bad color. Very usable color and you know if you you could always take a couple strands off and use them, make some earrings and make a bracelet, uh, use them for other things and still have a very wearable necklace. So with these big things, whoops, the, uh, the jar is only half full now but we'll uh, see how our time goes. These co are coordinated in color, but I don't think they go together. I think they're just tangled. Yes, okay. So this big plastic necklace that wants to um, wrap with everything else. This is long. Lobster claw clasp. And it's got a tag that says... Sorry, bandolera. So that's a, a jewelry tag I'm not familiar with. Bandolera. This is a beautiful blue. Look at these. Um, beautiful faceted acrylic beads, heavy and very long. Uh, in great shape. I guess it's, um, let's just try to do it, see if it's, yeah, it's, it's asymmetrical. Let's try to figure that out. But, uh, very summery. It's quite heavy. I'm not sure if everybody would want to wear it at that weight, because these, these beads are, as you can tell, they're, they're knockers. They're they're heavy acrylic, but a really pretty color, and such a nice blue. Unless you were doing a beautiful blue and silver Christmas tree, it it, it doesn't have a feel a holiday feel at all. So, some nice big necklaces. Now this um it was in the similar color and was tangled in there. So let's see, actually we got more than one thing. We got that piece, we got that piece, and we got this piece. Okay, so first of all, here is a, oh, this is sweet. Let me figure out how it goes. Okay, so this is stretchy, and it's those beautiful aqua pearly blue beads with some larger stations, so pearly blue seed beads, and I was looking at the wrong side, of it. it's the, but here we can see it's Disney, and I guess that's Cinderella. Let's see if we can focus on her face. Um, so there's a pretty Disney necklace for for a young girl, and it would definitely go over the head without a clasp, and it's the cord's strong enough that that's not gonna that's not gonna pull apart very easily. This is um, 
is it a complete necklace? Is it? There's a hook. There's an eye. Well, this is lovely. A very short, very short necklace, but uh, these feel more like glass beads. They don't feel like plastic. Um, probably a, you know, a fair trade or artisan made. Um, I would tend to be to more fair trade style. Um, beautiful, you know, aqua watercolors, the greeny blue and, and blue. Um, so very pretty, very wearable. Oh, I like that. Oh, there's so many nice things in here. Um, there's just too much jewelry and not enough time to wear it all. What's this? Okay. Oh, in that blue aqua theme, um, a striped pendant, slider pendant. Does it say something down there? It says 925. I don't know. Doesn't really look like any 925 I've ever seen. Let's give it the a little rub. Oh, it really shines up. Let's just say, look, so there's that side not shined. And the tarnish is coming off really well. So that has to be tested. Um, certainly the chain doesn't feel like it's 925. And do we have a... Oh, we have a knot. And we have a spring ring clasp. Um, oh, there are some markings on there. So... This could be 925. There's like three characters. And it'll, oh, I can see the word Italy. Yeah, it says 925 Italy. It says 925 Italy, if you can believe me, on that part of the chain. So, a possible sterling piece. And you can see, see that sort of golden color at the top. I have seen sterling go that color. So that would be, that would be a real score. Or a real find. Now, what have we got here? Something with a tag on it that says security sensor. Okay. Um, Alfani. Hey, another uh, Alfani. A L F A N I. Um, lobster claw clasp, a nice long, heaviest chain, excellent condition. That would look very nice on. I mean, it's probably oh, 18 inches. Oh no, probably closer to 24 inches. Um, so I'll have to look up Alfani. Focus this again. I seem to keep going out of focus. And uh, see who makes this particular jewelry. You never know. In a jewelry jar, you can learn so much. I mean, I know you can learn a lot reading a book or searching online, but you can learn so much from a jewelry jar. I'm trying. I'm pulling out hoop earrings in case they're all related in some way. What have we got here? Mm. Okay, so one textured hoop. No markings, a little bit of verdigris, so we'll put that out to the side. A smooth hoop. This one's a little more worn. And these are a pair. I think. Oh, they're not. Oh, shoot, because this is so nice. Look at this one with the texture and a little bit of uh, enameling. All right, so we have four mismatched two bearings. Let's uh, hope that their mates are somewhere lower down in the jar. Oh, I'm going to pull this over because this, this kind of looks like that earring that we found near the beginning. You know, that lightweight blue earring that had um, 
a fish hook earring and it had a very lightweight connector. This looks like they it would go with this necklace. Necklace is in good shape. Again, inexpensive, lightweight material. It's actually got an extender added to it. So somebody wore it with an extender to make it long enough. Three strands, plastic. Um, oh, and there's a little tiny tag, and those little tiny shaped tags are often Avon. Let's see if we can fool the camera into focusing on the tag. Yep, Avon. So there's an Avon necklace with an extender. We have one earring. Let's hope that the other earring is in the bag. Uh, oh, sorry, in the jar. <laughs> Certainly it doesn't seem to be in the pile here. Now, this looks like it was a rosary. Or is a rosary, it just needs to be fixed. Oh, it's, it is. Oh, look at this beautiful crucifix. Very nicely detailed with the metal pieces. And it says, Fatima. Oh, lovely. So, a souvenir of Fatima, where Our Lady appeared to the children and gave them the, the rosary as a way to pray for the, the world. And a lovely medallion of Our Lady and her a picture of her appearing to the uh, children. And this... Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, so this just needs to be reconnected. And there is a lovely um, Fatima rose me. My granddaughter would love this. My daughter would love this. I'm sure someone in my family will uh, appreciate this when it's repaired. Our daughter was, uh, our granddaughter was born in May, and her name is Miriam, which is a, a version of the, of the name Mary. Oh, wow. I'm hoping this is real amber. Look at this. I don't know how to make it look any more spectacular. A uh, heavy chain. Um, uh, something went wrong in terms of the way the clasp is attached. See if we can see any markings on the clasp. Yeah, it's definitely marked in some way. I see Italy 925 down near the bottom. I don't know if it's marked on this side as well. Oh, a little easier to see perhaps. Um, maybe not. There's some kind of a symbol. All right, well, that'll, I'll have to get the magnifier out and look at that. I forgot to bring a, uh, not a magnifier, I forgot to bring a magnet, you know, magnifier, magnet. Um, so textured on the back, but open. This looks to me like, um, amber. I wear amber. I love amber. I've always, that's the first jewelry that, well, after Tiger's Eye, that was the first jewelry that I started buying for myself and collecting to wear. So I'm hoping this is amber. Um, you can kind of rub it and see if it smells piney. I think this needs a good clean first before I do it. I'm gonna try the old, uh, let's see if, how this, uh, Let's focus it and let's see how it uh, shines up with the uh, yeah look at that shine up let's see if the chain shines up a bit oh I gotta get it I think it will. Another possible silver piece. Like, 
this is what I don't get. I don't get. Like they could have. It's like somebody just took a whole jewelry box or a bunch of jewelry and dumped it in the dar. And before now, they've been very carefully, you know, taking out the coro pieces and the trafari pieces and marking them, you know, eight ninety nine to twelve ninety nine. If somebody had realized, it, thought this was sil real silver, it would end up in the auction case for nineteen ninety nine to twenty nine ninety nine. So, possibly two silver pieces. Um, I'm going to pretend they are for, till, I, <laughs> till I am dissuaded that they're not. Um... Wow, I can't. Uh, this jar has paid me back multiple in multiple ways. This is, I'm sure this is some kind of a dangle. She says, not being able to find the end of it. Okay, so there's the dangle, and <laughs> here's the the necklace. Tangled up with another necklace, so we will... Okay. This is interesting. I love the ends. Nicely made. Lobster claw clasp. A heart. This is a stylized heart, so it's probably a specific maker that I'll have to look up. Um, so I'm going to remember that sort of... Think of it a heart, heart or a cue or... Um, no markings that I can see. We've got one, let's count them, one heavy sort of snake chain, two, three, four, five, like a curb chain and a rollo chain and one, yeah, five chains on the necklace, a good 24 inches. And then this slider dangle or fringe with the same chains involved but there's two, three, four of the snake chain and excuse me um, one, two, three, four of the other chain. That's very nice. Very wearable piece of jewelry like dress up, dress down. Wow! I would imagine somebody would like that. And here we have, it's knotted. Usually I keep a, a few um, blunt edged needles like uh, tapestry needles when I'm doing jewelry so that if, it's, easy, it's easier to get in the knots sometimes and detangle. So this is a lobster claw clasp on a, a lower quality chain, not 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 uh, marked. A nice patterned bail, smooth on the back, textured back, you know, um, base metal. But a lovely uh, heart with pink and white alternating rhinestones and flower and leaves in the center. Looks like there's a rhinestone missing right there. But that's uh, easily repaired. Uh, I know a young girl who would appreciate wearing this, who would like to wear this. Um, she's asked for an emerald looking necklace for Christmas because her birthday's in May and emerald is the birthstone for May. So I have uh, uh, my work cut out for me. But there, yeah, if we like somebody who's into hearts, there's two heart pieces that were in the jar. And I've got a few minutes left, so I'm just going to pull out small handful of things and one of them is really blingy. Ooh, look at this. Oh, it's peacocks. Wow. Oh gosh, this would take me forever to just see if all the rhinestones were there. But what a nice design. Like look at the enameling or painting. Um Wow. Oh, we gotta put this on and see what it's like. Hi, 
I'm your double peacock bracelet. That is really nice. Oh, and it makes a nice sound. Um, hmm. Sorry, I'm looking inside to see if it's marked in any way. Um, with the glare of the light, I don't think it is. Oh. Well, that's pretty special. I have um, a black, uh, no, a black, a blue sequined patterned jacket. I call my Bluebird of Paradise jacket that I wear on very special occasions because it's heavy and it's hot. Um, but this bracelet would do it justice. Wow. Oh, cool. Um, uh, hey, like, as I said, you know, wearable jewelry is always fun. This is another hoop earring and it's lost its parts. Obviously it had some sort of glass or plastic bits in there. They're gone and it doesn't match any of the other hoop earrings. Got quite a collection of hoop earrings. Here is a rhinestone cross. This is heavy. It it's not really prong set. It looks like it would be, but you can see the prongs don't go anywhere really near the stones. It's on a a cloth like a, a faux uh, faux velvet even cord. Really flimsy and lightweight. One of those things that I could break if I just snapped. I could snap it with my fingers. So this deserves a better, um, you know, even a gunmetal chain would be improvement. Lobster claw clasp, no marking, but very wearable cross. Maybe more of a goth type cross, but hey, you know, you wear it with piety and, and you don't have to call it a goth cross. Look at this. Look at this. This is cool. A slider of sliders. I'll lay it out here for you. It's very small. Like this is a choker. I would be choked, but it's five sliders, three with gold sides and two with red rhinestones on the side. Um, I think those are, yeah, plastic or acrylic textured pieces. Um, nice flat snake chain, nicely done on the back. Like these could have been just, you know, flat metal, but they're actually, you could almost wear it this direction. I'm back. I had to answer the phone. So, uh, yeah, I'm impressed that this is so well made on the back because you can almost wear this backwards. It's attractive enough. Um, so kudos to whoever designed it. it. I mean, maybe the back issue was just to save metal, but... It's uh, nicely done. Very wearable piece. Definitely a choker. Like, we put it this way, it's hardly, it's going to be just on 18 inches. Um, well, or less, yeah. It's less. It's less, because my hand span is 9, so that's about 16 inches. So, if you know anybody who likes red and gold, and would like a nice necklace to wear for Christmas. That's a beautiful thing. Okay. And uh, one last piece. Because this came out already. I'm going to just quickly look. Okay, so this is... Oh. I was going to say it was broken. But I think it's supposed to be a memory wire bracelet. Kind of loose. Either that or there was another stone in here, and but then it would be kind of hard to get on. I don't know. So this is a piece of glass. It's very pretty glass. Some spacers, some um, would feel like glass beads on memory wire. Um, this is definitely worth uh, repurposing in another piece of jewelry. So lots of wearable pieces, some interesting names that I haven't uh, seen before. This 
Lisa Alfani that I have to look up. The couple of uh, potential silver pieces, they're marked. Um, certainly this chain is marked. This looks like a uh, an amber cross. Um, this little piece is marked 925 on the back here and on the uh, on the clasp as well and on the chain. So I hope you've enjoyed this tour of part two of the jewelry jar and uh, I'll be back with some more parts. I hope you're well, take care, and uh, keep smiling in these challenging times. It's Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes.